Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Behind the Scenes of Skeleton Rap. I am your host, Micah, and I still need an intro, because I don't really have one. Made that up on the spot. But, uh, yeah, welcome to Behind the Scenes of Skeleton Rap, our newest music video that we just uploaded about a week ago. I was hoping to make this behind the scenes a little sooner, but I was caught up with a lot of stuff, and, uh, yeah. So, now I finally have time to record this. And you might want to stay till the end because I am going to be interviewing the production team because this is our first full music video where we had a bunch of animators and modelers helping us out on it. And it was a big help. So we are going to be interviewing a couple people and asking about their experience working on this and any fun little stories that may have happened during production. So uh, without further ado, let's start watching. So this is the very first scene where Zachary's running through the forest. This scene was animated by Graffy, who helped out on Doki Doki with the physics. So yeah, the there's no audio in this part because that was all added in a post by Zachary. But we kind of felt like this video needed this little prologue scene. Because if it just went straight into, well, hello again, friend. It would have been like, I don't know, kind of sudden. There's not really any backstory, so it's not really anything like a true backstory. But it like it's nice to see a little a little beginning scene. It, it just helps make the world feel more tangible, I guess. Also, the one thing I noticed Graffy did is there are uh, two pickaxes for some reason. I don't know why that is. I think it was some parenting constraint thing, but yeah, there's two pickaxes there. <laughs> also, shout out to uh, Markcraft and Cloud9 for doing the nighttime lighting for these beginning scenes and the later nighttime scenes. They were a big help because I wasn't able to make the nighttime scenes look good for some reason. The only thing I added was this um, this thing right here. You might be wondering what this is. This is a, um, a spot lamp that is shining through this, uh, these little squares. And when it goes through it, it makes it look like those little light rays. You probably can't see them too clearly, but they're like those, you know, those god rays or... They're, they're called volumetric lights, but yeah, a lot of people call them god rays. So... Let's move on to the next scene, because I think that's all there really is to talk about this one. Oh, wait, no, 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 I'm forgetting. There was a uh, an early draft of this scene <laughs> that looked um, pretty interesting, so I'm just going to show that on the screen right now. Yeah, uh, the second that happened, I knew I had to show it in the behind the scenes, so there it is for your uh, for your viewing pleasure. All right, let's move on to the next scene. All right, the final, the final. All right, here it is, the first scene with actual singing in it. Uh, so let's just play it. This part was animated by Cloud9, by the way, or Cloud X, as he is titled now. He did a really good job on this video. He animated a lot of parts, and his his style stays pretty consistent with the uh, examination style, so that fit pretty well into this video. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be a little weird for me to commentate over some of this because this is the first video where me and Zachary didn't animate like everything. So I, I didn't know, I don't know some of the progress and the process that went into making this. So I'm gonna have to, there won't be as much for me to talk about per scene, but for the scenes I animated, there will be. Me and Zachary animated like, I'd say about a third of the video. If you watch our other behind the scenes, by the way, that we posted, uh, earlier this week, you will see who animated each scene because in the uh, in the top corner there's a um, a thing there that says who lit, who lit each scene and who animated each scene. So you should probably go watch that. It's really cool. A lot of people are liking it, by the way. So I'm glad that everyone's liking these behind the scenes. So let's move on to this one. This was also animated by Cloud9. Oh, and uh, Markcraft did the nice looking water in the background. I uh, it was it used to be just blue default Minecraft water, but then 
Markcraft was like, hold my beer. And then he made this, this looking water. It didn't show up too much, but in our next video, it's gonna show up a lot because we have a lot of water in that video because it's based at the beach and there's an ocean. That video is coming out within the next two weeks, by the way, so you might want to stay tuned and subscribe to the main channel. We're going to do a behind the scenes on that as well. Also, the reason this video is so well, I'd say well put together and timed and so many interesting little things is because we went really detailed with the, uh, the layout on this video and Zachary did all the layout within like two weeks or something. This, this whole video, by the way, was a four-week production. It was our fastest video ever. Just Monica took about three months. Follow Me took about three months. Pigman Dan was six months. And Foxy Song was like 11 months. So this being four weeks was an absolute time crunch, but we ended up making it. And the quality still stayed pretty high, so I'm proud of the team. <laughs> they did a good job. So let's look at the next scene. All right, scene three. This scene was, oh, this scene was animated by me. Let's look it over. Yeah, uh, what to say about this? Um, huh. I didn't do the lip sync or the facial expression. Zachary did that, cause he's more of a, a master at that. He did all the facial expressions in Why'd I Say- or not Why'd I Say Okie I mean, uh, just Monica. He did all the fa- Oh, one thing I also noticed is the, uh, the fancy water didn't get put into this scene, and Markcraft noticed that, so I'm- I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. It- it just turned out being the normal blue water. Interesting fact about, uh, this part. I'm not very good at run cycles, so for this part, I made it only show his upper half, because if you look under- Okay, first of all, he's not even running on anything, but if you look at his legs, they're just like, extremely messed up. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I didn't show the bottom half, because I am not very good at running. Yeah. The good thing about this part actually is, uh, it was fairly easy to light because- Oh, whoa, okay. Didn't know he was standing this far above the, uh, the ground. And, uh, Zack is <laughs> underneath the floor for some reason. I didn't even see this. I'm the one who animated this and I don't remember this. But, as I was saying, uh, the lighting on the, the nighttime scenes was pretty easy for me because all I had to do was set up key lights on their faces because Markcraft and Cloud9 already did all the base lighting. So thank you for that. Alright, let's move on to the next scene. Alright, scene four. This is the first scene I animated in the whole video. And I'm pretty proud of it, actually. It turned out, I think, looking pretty, pretty nice. Like, it's really abstract and it's all green and it looks pretty nice. If it would play. There we go. Yeah, the original layout just had a bunch of skulls and a black floor. So I was like, hmm, how could I make this more interesting? And I immediately thought, what if there was more smoke? Because we used the same smoke uh, effect that we used for just Monica with all the red smoke. But I just turned it green and added these little ploppy geyser looking things. And I got the idea for these skulls being on the spires from uh, the Mandalorian trailer. Where there was a bunch of stormtrooper heads on these uh, spikes. So that kind of gave me the idea for that. And the rest of this theme for this scene was kind of based off um, the Lion King where Scar sings his song and it's all like all green and there's these like canyon looking things. That's why I added all these in the background. These uh, stone walls and uh, what are they? Stalagmites or stalactites coming from the roof. So yeah, that's how that scene went down. And I, I think it turned out looking great. <laughs> uh, okay, right, let's, uh, uh, la, 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 let's move on to the next scene. All right, here we are in scene five. This scene was animated by Zachary with the exception of the spider, which I animated. Let's look at it. <laughs> I remember I was, uh, I was watching Star Wars episode three while, watch while animating the spider. 
I know that's a random detail, but I don't know why I remember that so so vividly. But yeah, I was watching it while animating that spider. But yeah, spiders are difficult to animate. Oh my gosh, their legs are just so many, and they're all going through. I, this isn't entirely accurate to a spider walk because some of their legs are just completely clipping through each other. It's just it's so hard to do. But I think I got up, got it, and did blah, 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 blah. I ended up getting it looking pretty okay to the point where no one no one really pointed it out. And then yeah, Zachary animated all the uh, the brain and all the facial expressions and stuff on the skeleton. Yeah, and I lit it. It's a, it's a really simple lighting. It's just a uh, volumetric square behind him. If you could see this box right here, this volumetric cloud, and I put a red light behind it. And yeah, it switches to red whenever the brain opens. And that, that was pretty simple. It's like two second render times, because yay Eevee. Okay, let's move on to scene six. All right, scene six. Um, yeah, interesting for this one. Zachary animated all of this, and he did the idea for the layout and stuff, and he actually modeled this uh, bone Eiffel Tower. Let's actually watch this first. <laughs> so, um, I modeled this little, uh, what would you call it? Oh, there's some name for it. It's not a chassel or whatever. I forget what it is. I'm just going to call it a cup, a golden cup. I modeled the golden cup, and I added the, uh, the lighting and the background. I, I reused um, Markcraft's sky stars that he used from the earlier scenes. And instead of him being an actual Paris, this is um, a Disneyland Paris map, because I couldn't find an actual Paris map. So I'm like, ah, uh, doesn't matter. It won't, won't show up that much anyway. So yeah, he's in Disneyland Paris with the Eiffel Tower made of bones in the background. And the lighting setup was pretty simple, more volumetrics with a uh, spotlight going on him, and just a little area light in front of him for a key light. And these, um, the little, uh, wine coming out of the glass into his mouth was actually done by Cloud9. These are called, uh, what are they called? They were called, like, Meta Balls or something, the way he did it. But when he, when he posted progress update, in the uh, in the examination production chat, he kept saying, uh, "Oh, I added the meta balls," but everyone thought he said meatballs, so <laughs> no one knew what he was talking about. So uh, yeah, I was pretty confused, but he did a good job. So uh, good job, Cloud. Or I, I keep calling him Cloud Nine, Cloud X, as he is now referred to. All right, let's look at the next scene. All right, scene seven. Let's take a look. Yeah, I did everything on this scene. I did the animation, the lighting, and all that. So, yeah, for this dust kind of stuff, it's just the same smoke that we used for just Monica again, just slowed down and scaled up. And yeah, I animated uh, the skeleton doing that walk as well. Oh, and yes, this is a PNG sky, the same one from uh, Why'd I Say Okie Dokie and Just Monica. And I modeled a few uh, 1.14 Minecraft cactuses and some. Uh, a little bit of bendy uh, dead bush because it looked a little too plain without anything there, so I added those in. And a couple particles on the ground, but I don't know if anyone's gonna recognize this, but this is actually the set from uh, the Old Town Road Minecraft animation that we helped make on Captain Sparkle's channel. Uh, yeah, this is just the same map that I that we used for that video, so I just kind of used it for this one. Because it was like, oh, we have a desert map lying around and we need a skeleton to be in the desert. So, uh, yeah, it was really convenient. And the lighting was kind of hard because Eevee does not have light bouncing, which is super important for a lot of lighting. Which is why we're actually going to be using cycles for our next video, um, the turtle animation we've been working on. So, yeah, that'll be interesting to see how that goes. The lighting's probably going to look a lot better. But I think I got it looking pretty okay, with a bunch of After Effects, of course. So, uh, let's look at the next part. Alright, here we are in Scene 8. This part was actually really cool, because, uh, Jacob Van, the modeler who did all this, uh, this set inside here, he was our, um, he was our old anim school teacher that taught us some, uh, modeling stuff and a little animation when we were taking our anim school course and he modeled this uh, this nice looking lab set 
and it actually ended up looking really cool. One thing that I added on my own is this little, um, this little green slime stuff going through here. Unfortunately, it only showed for like, what, three frames? <laughs> but, I don't know. I, I just thought it was a cool addition, and I used that as the main light for the scene. Most of this is green coming out of here. And I made some little zappy effects coming out of these, um, what do you call them? I don't know what you call these things. I made some zapping effects coming out of this in After Effects using the Saber plugin, which is the same thing that I used in Just Monica for when Monica blows up the items, the cupcakes and poems and tea, uh, those little lightning looking effects. I used the same thing in uh, After Effects, and that part ended up looking pretty cool. So yeah, good job Jacob Van on the set. So let's go on the next part. Oh, this part was animated by Zachary, by the way. So let's go on to the next part. Oh boy. Okay, here we are in scene 9. A lot to talk about on this part. So let's watch it first. The skeleton comes together from a bunch of pieces. Yeah, um... I regret adding this many bones, because this scene crashed multiple times before the video... The day before the video came out, because I actually interesting fact uh a day before this video came out we were like oh shoot we still have a lot more work to do so i ended up staying up the entire night and into the next day i worked for 32 hours straight and without sleeping or even taking f well i took a couple food breaks but i worked a long time straight rendering out all the scenes and adding backgrounds and this is one of the scenes i worked on that kept crashing multiple times and i was like ah I really want it to work because it looks cool. So what it is, is actually this kind of a bit of deception on the scale of this. I was going to add it all as bone objects, but it ended up getting too laggy. So what I did is I went to the top view and took a screenshot of the bones and put them on a bunch of PNG planes that, um, yeah, I just moved them all around here. The background ones are still 3D though, and there's a couple giant bones there too. But uh, yeah, the mo the rest of these are all PNG bones with a couple of 3D ones sticking out in the background, and it was it was pretty well hidden with the lighting and stuff. So I'm I'm glad it worked because this was quite a spectacle seeing this many bones. So it ended up looking really cool. The scene was animated by Zachary too, by the way. He animated the uh, all the pieces going onto the skeleton. Which, I don't know how he did that, actually. Uh, Mark, when he was rigging the skeleton, added a feature that all the bones can come off. But still, it must have been a pain to animate all the bones uh, forming onto each other like this. If it would play. This scene is still laggy, by the way, with this many bones. So, it's probably not going to play well. Yeah, but... You can see all these bones floating in the sky and like all eventually connecting back onto them. So yeah, that part was cool. Good job, everybody. Uh, let's go on to scene 10. All right, here we are in scene 10. Uh, I animated this part. <laughs> I think I went a little overboard on the head squish here <laughs> for uh, Zek. But, uh, I don't know, it looks cartoony and funny, so, we at least we got some good screenshots out of it. Zachary did the facial expressions, as usual. And, yeah, the, the set for this is pretty simple. There's just a, uh, a stone wall here with, uh, interesting, um, uh, material on it that Marcraft helped me set up. Because we've never done, um, uh, normal maps before. So, like, it's actually kind of bumpy looking on it, which is neat. And he helped me set that up, so thank you, Mark. And then for the background, it was the same thing as that earlier scene. It's just a uh, volumetric cube with a blue light behind it. Yeah, this scene was actually kind of a pain because I had animated the whole skeleton. But then he, like, stopped working for some reason, so I had to reappend the model. And when I tried to put the keyframes back on it, everything was like 100% completely inverted. So everything he did was backwards. Like if he put his arm up, the arm would go down. And if he put his head backwards, it would go forward. And it was like so messed up. So I had to go into the graph editor for like a half hour and just invert everything individually. And it took so long. 
but at least it ended up working in the long run. By the way, while switching to the scene, my computer almost crashed from that bone scene because I just realized the file size for that bone scene is eight times larger than the scene at the end where it has all the mobs and stuff. So it's that big. So yeah, that was probably a mistake adding that many bones. Anyway, let's look at the next scene. All right, here's scene 11. This scene was animated by Cloud9. Cloud X, Cloud X, I mean. So yeah, uh, for the background on this part, I just reused the, uh, this, yeah, these are all floating, by the way. These are all the, uh, parts from scene four where he was walking on the skulls. I just reappended these and did, uh, orange smoky lighting behind him because this is one of those scenes that I worked on within those 32 hours where I stayed up, like, all night. And, yeah, I, I, some... Some parts, I'll admit, I had to go a little lazy to get it out on time. So this part, at least it ended up looking good, but it was pretty lazy how I just reappended all the assets for this scene and just changed the color. But it was a time crunch, so it was really all I could do. But yeah, this scene ended up looking pretty good as well, I think. Cloud9 did a good job animating it. So let's move on to the next scene. Alright, scene 12. This scene was animated by, um, who was it? I think it was Zachary. Uh, uh, actually, it might have been Cloud9. Or Cloud X. I think Cloud X animated, uh, Zachary in this scene. And Zachary animated the facial expressions, and I animated the skeleton at the end. So the way I did that effect where he comes out of the darkness like this is because it's impossible to, since there's ambient light, it's impossible to make it completely black back here. So what I did is I added a black plane where, because you can see the wall right here. So I added a, two black planes. One in the back is so that it will be completely black over here. And then there's another black plane in front of the skeleton that actually fades away if you can see it the black background fades away so that it would look like he's emerging from the darkness so from the camera view it looks like he's just coming out of the darkness even though it's just a black plane floating away so that's how i did that it, it took a little while to think of but because i didn't know how was i, I was going to make it completely dark but it ended up working so that was good so let's move on to the next scene Oh yeah, oh wait, 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 Markcraft actually did the lighting for the uh, inside of here as well, with all the torches and stuff. So thank you, Markcraft. Let's move on to the next part. Alright, scene 13. This part was animated by M-Duck, and it actually has one of the best, one of the best uh, still frames in the entire video. So, uh, let's play it. He did a good job on this because running is really hard in animation, and this scene had a lot of running, so... Good job, M Duck. And he even stumbled up from that from that fall. Yeah, M Duck did a really good job on this part. Also, one thing I learned while making this is Mineways, the uh, the exporting tool that I use to import Minecraft worlds, because this wasn't a set. Me and Zachary actually went into Minecraft and built this uh, this little um, what do you call it? A mine shaft area. We made it in Minecraft. But one thing I noticed that when you export... Alright, uh, I'm back. Uh, um, I ran out of, uh, disk space between the last scene and this one, so I wasn't able to play frames in Blender. That's why it was so laggy in the last part. So, yeah, I had to delete a recording that I did earlier. So I'm kind of redoing this part, but yeah, I shouldn't have that problem again so we can continue smoothly throughout the rest of it. Uh, let's take a look at this part. Yeah, Zachary animated all this part. He did a really good job with the faces. And Mark did the, uh, the nighttime lighting for this scene as well. So, uh, yeah, I I'm not really much to say about- Oh wait, yes, this pumpkin is actually from the- Yuri render that we posted on our community tab on Halloween 
and we kind of used it for this video as an Easter egg if anyone picked that up. I saw a few comments saying they re recognized it, so that's where it's from. Alright, let's move on to the next scene. Alright, scene 15. This is the, uh, I animated this shot, and, um, <laughs> the, uh, no one's gonna understand that ref this reference with the, uh, the swim trunks, but this is actually, uh, the same swim trunks model from a, uh, a bootstrap buckaroo video called, uh, Halloween, what is it, Halloween Terror Minecraft Animation. It, it was, it's one of my favorite Minecraft animations, and it's really old, but I ended up referencing the skeleton wearing the swim trunks in the pool. I'll show a picture of it on screen. So yeah, that's where I got it from. Alright, let's play this. <laughs> okay, so first of all, when his head comes off here, this neck isn't actually the the neck from the model. I just copied a little mesh and animated it to move with the head so it looks like there's a neck. Cause it looked really like his head was just floating off. So I added a little neck thingy. And I'll talk about how I did the, uh, the trunks getting pulled off because I am really not good with dynamics. So I had to kind of cheat it. What I did was these are a bunch of different meshes with shape keys. So I made one shape key that is in this shape with it ripping. And then for the next frame, I switched it over to these little rigs of cloth that are just on bones. And then the rest of it was just hand animated from those little cloth rigs. So yeah, that's how I did that. And then Mark also did the nighttime lighting on this scene. And he put a red light behind his butt for some reason, and he doesn't know why. But, uh, I think it ended up looking pretty good, so we kept it. So, uh, let's look at the next scene. Alright, scene 16. This scene was actually animated by Red, the animator. And this background with the beach, some people recognized it, but it's the same beach uh, that was at the end of Now Hanging at Freddy's in this Surfshark ad. And it's going to be the main location of our next video, so it's kind of an easter egg for that. Because the turtle animation takes place on this exact same beach. So, yeah. And, uh, oh yeah, you probably didn't notice from the camera. But I just duplicated the set multiple times, so there's like three houses. And they're all going in the inside each other, and they're like in the ravine and stuff. I just needed more background. So I added those. Let's take a look at this. <laughs> yeah, I like the idea for this shot. Zachary came up with it. Life. And Zachary made this little, um, spot lamp model. It's not really textured because it was only shown in one shot, and we were on a crunch anyway for time. So there's not a texture on it, but... Yeah, the whole place is dark anyway, so you can't really see it that well. And the shot still ended up looking really good, so... Yeah. Let's move on to the next one and look at that. Alright, shot 17. This one was animated by mostly Zachary and a little bit me at the end. I have a funny story for this part. The reason, the reason his face looks like this is because there is a shot exactly like this that happens in Just Monica. And he's supposed to be having flashbacks like, oh no, not this again. Why me? Because he was also the main character in Just Monica. So he's like, oh no, I'm out of here. And then he just whoops away. That's the part I animated when he just goes, Meow. So, yeah. <laughs> That's why he looks like that on that shot. Okay, let's look at the next shot. Alright, scene 18. I animated this shot. Yeah, um, what is there to say about this shot? Uh, I didn't like animating the running at the beginning, because I don't like animating running. <laughs> and... I liked animating this part, though, because... The walk is very, um... Exaggerated. And the legs aren't moving exactly accurately, because it's not shown in the camera view. But I liked animating the bouncy up and down of the body, so that was pretty fun. And, yeah, not really much else to say about this part. Except for the fart- The fart. <laughs> except for the fart that I forgot to add the, uh, the house assets for this scene. So they're magically there in the next part. Whoops. 
Let's go in the next shot. Alright, scene 19. This was the longest scene in the video. This one was animated by Red the Animator. And, yeah, let's watch it through. Oh yeah, funny story first. Um, apparently this scene forgot to get animated with him shooting a bow. I mean, yeah, when he was shooting the bow, there was no arrow that got added for some reason. So, Zachary in post had to end up looking up Minecraft Arrow PNG, and he photoshopped it to have motion blur and color correct it, and he just manually made a PNG arrow coming out. And it was so quick that it was barely noticeable, so it was a good save. Oh, also, Shelf Penguin. He showed up in this part. I don't know how many people caught it. But yes, he is going to be on a shelf in every video, even the next one. I will manage to find a way to put the penguin in the turtle animation, even though there's no shelves in that video. I will find a way. And then, yeah, most of these assets for the house are reused from other videos. The only new one, though, was um, these bookshelves that I modeled after the Minecraft ones. But I just made them all 3D and with actual books inside. And... Oh yeah, this fireplace is from, if anyone watches, wow, what am I saying? If anyone watches Examination 2, this is Examination 2. If anyone watches Examination 2 consistently, and they saw the Christmas collab videos that we uploaded, um, this fireplace was actually modeled for Zachary's scene with the Doki Doki characters, if you want to go check that out. And I ended up putting it in this set, but it didn't get shown from any camera angles, so there's no point in me really adding it, so, whoops. Is Shelf Penguin on this part? No, he's not. Okay. <laughs> he gets knocked out a lot in this video. Oh yeah, I added a light to the ceiling uh, on this part, even though there's uh, there's no light on the ceiling. So I just put a uh, a light outside of the frame. So yeah, it didn't really get shown much, but like I always say, it only matters what looks good from the camera view. So, take that in mind for whatever you win. Let's go on to the next part. Okay, this scene was fairly simple, but a little frustrating for me to figure out. Let's just watch it. it yeah, it's just the scene switch here. But it was kind of hard for me to figure out a way to make the sky change and also make the lighting change for the, the sky, because the sky... It, it's kind of hard to change the, or at least I couldn't figure out a way to change the sky color as well as adding a sun lamp because the environment for this is the same environment that I appended that Mark made for the nighttime scenes. And I didn't know how to change it because it was already a preset. So what I did is I just made the sky this giant blue square and put a sun next to it and then change the lighting to be whatever looked good from the back. So, it's kind of a cheat, but it ended up working fine. So yeah, not much else to say on that part. So let's move on to the next one. All right, scene 22. Yeah, this is the funniest part. <laughs> Zachary animated this part. Uh, for this shot, actually, it was a... Um, it was kind of a recreation of that one shot from the Muppets. I'll put it on screen. Yeah, it was supposed to be kind of a reference to that shot. And it turned out really funny because <laughs> he looks like a Muppet on that part. And yeah, for the fire, it's just Minecraft fire parented to his head. It kind of... I made it move around with shape keys on this part where it kind of flops back and forth. But not much else than that. And then it's just normal daytime lighting. Not much, just a sun lamp. That's it. <laughs> it's just a sun lamp. Uh, there's not much else to do in the daytime lighting. So uh, let's move on to the next scene. All right, scene 23 with uh, fancy Markcraft water. Let's watch it. Zachary animated this part. Yeah, I, uh, there wasn't a sun here before, but I was just- I couldn't resist adding a sun and making this cool glare effect, so, 
I would have added a lens flare if I knew how, but I don't know how, so I just didn't. And yeah, not really much to say about this part, other than the fact that there's no, um, his body doesn't react to the water because, I don't know, we, we were on a time crunch again, plus I don't know how to do that, so I didn't really want to bother anyone else asking how to do it. But yeah, we our next animation, the turtle animation, I believe that one is going to have reactions in the water when stuff goes in the ocean, so look forward to that. Okay, let's go to the next scene. Alright, scene 24. The first scene in that giant area at the end. These scenes took the longest to render out of all the other scenes. They took uh, about 16 to 20 seconds per frame, which doesn't sound like a lot, but for Eevee, we usually get around two to three seconds per frame. So this was like, what, five times that or more. So uh, let's play it. This part was animated by me and Zachary did the facial expressions. Mangarang actually animated part of this, but it got deleted. So uh, I'm sorry, Mangarang. And yeah, the set actually took a long time making because uh, Mark helped me make this, um, if you can see from the rendered view, there's these cool reflections on the ground, and it's kind of bumpy, and he showed me how to make that. And there's a bunch of green smoke everywhere, and these, Mark actually did these particles popping out at the back, where it's like these little ploops of goo. He, he did all that. And there is a gigantic stone barrier around here that I can't add in because it lags the scene too much. So I'm literally just gonna not put it here <laughs> while we're uh, recording the behind the scenes. But yeah, I, I I don't know. I try to think of a scene for this end area because in layout, it was just a giant white plane. So I was like, how can I make this look cool? So I thought it'd look cool if it was like these broken chunks of earth with these like green glowing magma or whatever underneath it was going to be red at first but then i was like uh, the doki doki climax was already all red with all these glowing red effects and then i was like we already did a green scene earlier with the stepping on the skulls so why not just do that again so we decided to make this end area green and i think it served it really well so yeah that ended up looking good so let's go on to the next scene. All right, scene 25, the big scene when all the mobs come out. It's a little laggy. I don't know, probably because of all the um, the mobs in the set, but it's it's passable. So yeah, huge huge props to all the asset designers on our team who modeled all these because most of them were modeled by other people. Zachary modeled this creeper skeleton, and I modeled the main skeleton, but everything else was made by our modelers, and they did a super good job making the textures and the and the models for the skeleton versions of the mobs. So yeah, I'm hoping I'm getting this right, but the people who made the skeleton models were Kobit, uh, Jacob Van, The Stool, Noise Chip, and Train Guy. I think they did all of these, uh... Skeleton. I hope I didn't miss anyone, and I'm sorry if I did. But yeah, they made all these models, and Train Guy made the gigantic Ender Dragon model, which was amazing. And just I don't know how he did this, but it turned it out. It turned out looking really good. So yeah, thank you to all the modelers who helped with this, and all the riggers who uh, rigged each mob, because that was a lot of work too. Because each mob that got modeled had to get rigged as well, so shout out to the riggers. Alright, let's move on to the next part. Alright, scene 26. Uh, this part was animated by Cloud uh, Cloud X and Zachary. The Zachary animated the Ender Dragon, and Cloud X animated all of them. Actually, I, I did like a bunch of the walk cycles, but everything that's not a walk cycle, Cloud X animated. I'll show off some of the walk cycles after this as well. Yeah, and I did the little purple stuff coming out of the Ender Dragon's mouth. Oh, you can still see the little emitter plane right here. I hope that didn't get shown. So, uh... Oh yeah, you can actually see the giant stone background here. 
It's this giant triangle looking thing. So, yeah. I guess it's not lagging in this scene for some reason. Which is good. So, uh, let's move on to the next part. Alright, scene 27. This part was done by Zachary and I did the lighting. And it's not much to say about it, it's just some simple animation. And yeah, it's just really simple. Just one white light in front of him and a blue light behind him. Just simple three-point lighting. And then I put point lamps attached to his, or area lamps attached to his eyes. So when his eyes move around, there's a little white glow. So let's move on to the next scene. Okay, this scene is scene 28, and this was Dan Bull's ending. For some reason, the background's not here, but I'm just going to keep it out so it doesn't lag. But I had to make Crispy crispy Zack getting burnt by Ender Dragon, Dragon's Breath. And what I did for this is I... What'd I do? Okay, this is the skeleton rig from the rest of the video. But, oh yeah, I actually just deleted the skeleton's eyes. And, because he still has the eyeball controls here, I deleted his eyeballs and closed his, uh, closed his eyes slightly and just moved everything really skeleton-y. And the texture is just a normal skeleton texture with some purple on it because of the dragon's breath. And yeah, I just made his clothes all burnt and ragged and then added a couple glowing parts as well. And yeah, that part was pretty simple, but it turned out looking okay. So yeah, let's look at the final scene. Alright, this is the R ending with uh, Dan Lloyd voicing the villager from Element Animation. Let's play it. Ooh, that lag. Uh. Okay, this is not going to play <laughs> very well because there's a bunch of lag, but I can just skim through it. But, uh, yeah, this, uh, villager was voiced by Dan Lloyd from Element Animation. I asked him if he wanted to make a cameo because Element Animation made Creeper Rap and Enderman Rap, which were the other two raps that Dan Bull had made about Minecraft. So I said, hey, do you want to make a cameo in the, uh, end of our rap? So he said, yeah, and he recorded voice lines, um, for the villager, and that turned out really good. And Zachary animated all this scene. So yeah, I'm really thankful that he uh, was willing to cameo. Because it ended up being a nice addition. Everyone in the comments seemed to like it. So, yeah. Uh, next, I am going to show off some of the walk cycles that I animated for the, um, for the uh, end scene. But I'm going to do them more as just a kind of a quick showcase. With a bunch of them on screen and I'll probably be talking over them. So yeah, let's go into that. So for these walk cycles, I spent, uh, it was pretty much just a full day of me going through each mob and animating a walk cycle. The cow and pig ones are pretty similar, but I had to animate them separately. And yeah, we tried to make them all goofy looking and exaggerated and it ended up looking really good. I really like the creeper one, it was really bouncy. And the villager one was kind of um, supposed to be how how Blue Monkey animates his uh, walking in his videos. How it's like really uh, quick and snappy. So that's kind of a little reference to that. And then the Pigman march was just kind of the same march that was earlier in the video when he's walking on the skulls. It's not the same animation, but I just did it the same way. And the chicken, <laughs> I thought I had too many walks. So I said, how about I just make a bounce up and down and kind of float down. So I uh, made the chicken bounce up and down. And then the spider was pretty hard because spiders are hard because they have so many legs. So yeah, I just spent probably the longest time on the spider animating the legs going back and forth. So that was a challenge. But yeah, I think the um, it ended up looking good, all the walk cycles. And I'm proud of how it turned out. So uh, yeah. Let's, um, let's move on to interviews, because I am going to interview some of the people who worked on this. So, uh, let's get straight into that. Alright, so I am here with Markcraft, who did a lot of the, the lighting and some very other, ver various other things on this video, and he also rigged the main skeleton. So, hello. uh, hello, Markcraft. Hello. Uh, I have a few questions that I'm gonna ask. I don't have them written out, but I just kinda wanna ask them. 
Uh, how was your experience working on Skeleton Rat? Uh, it was actually pretty fun to do, actually. I didn't expect this to be done that quickly. Yeah, but four weeks. Uh, overall, yeah. <laughs> it was mostly because of Cloud. I didn't expect him to work that quickly, though. Yeah, Cl Cloud X did a lot of the animation on this video, and he was really fast as well. And his style matched ours, and it's like really high quality, so everything yeah. is just good about it. Yeah. And this video also got done faster because of Mark's help, so thank you for that. No problem. Mostly I was available literally 90% of the time. Yeah, that that's very useful when people are readily available to help on stuff, because there were some various things that wasn't his job from the start, but he ended up kind of just helping with, because he knows a lot more about Blender than I do. Five years does things to you, man. <laughs> so, um, any... Uh, funny production stories while this was going on? Uh, let me go through my files and let me see. Alright. Uh, let's see. Here's shots and sims. Here we go. There wasn't... Actually, there was a couple glitches that I found during production, but I later fixed and I hadn't saved over and I wish I should have saved them. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, those would have been good to show. I, I'm, I already showed the uh, scene Graffy animated earlier. The one with the oh, that's great. jerky legs and stuff. <laughs> that was one of the best scenes ever. Yeah. Well, I guess I'll ask the next question then. What was yeah. what was the most fun part to work on? Honestly, the lighting. The lighting? Yep. When everything was going through, like, I'm uh, ready to render, you asked me to do all the lighting stuff. And it was kind of fun to do. <laughs> Knowing that I'm, uh, I'm uh, it was going to be later fixed in post and seeing how good it would be. Especially the mineshaft scene, I don't know why. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. I did a lot of after effects oh. for the uh, scenes with like the well, directing one... and stuff. One of my questions was, why was one of the scenes where I'm, uh, it was the one where M Duck animated, why was that scene more bluish than the, the rest of the scene? Oh, because the, uh, later in that same shot, it switches to outside where it's nighttime. And the environment oh. lighting was like a dark blue, so it oh. went inside the cave. Because for the other shot, it never showed outside, so I just made the the ambient light like kind of orangish. And I couldn't really work around it. I tried color correcting it in After Effects, but it it didn't could completely have, fix it. You could have done indirect um, uh, lighting. You could have baked the lighting for that, and that should have fixed it. Oh well. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> Well, now you do. For next tip. So, right. um, I think I had another question. Uh, what was the hardest thing to do in this video? Uh, animating the water. For some reason, I went through like almost 30 minutes of testing water, and I don't know why it took so long to, to perfect it. Oh, well, at least it turned out good. And it's gonna yeah. be shown a lot in the turtle animation as well. Yeah. So, yeah, stay tuned for that video. Yep. And I, I apologize that one of the shots in Skeleton Wrap didn't have the water. <laughs> I don't know why it was. Yeah, you didn't tell- you, didn't, you, you told me the shots, like, these were the shots, like, okay, he must have already fixed the one with the- with that one, like, okay. So I went back to check and I think you already had it rendered out. Yeah, I, I apologize. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> That's alright. Okay. Well, uh, I'm probably gonna interview, uh, CloudX now, so... Thank you for showing up and talking a little about a little about your experience working on the project. No problem, man. Okay, I will uh, talk to you later. All right, so I am here with Cloud X, who was one of the animators on Skeleton Rap, and he animated a big portion of the video, so that was really helpful. <laughs> so uh, say hello, Cloud X. Hi. So I'm gonna ask you a few questions, uh, starting with. Uh, how was your experience working on Skeleton Rap? It was amazing. I've always, I've, I've, um, I've always wanted to, um, work with you and stuff, and I've all, I've always watched all your stuff before, and now that I've finally gotten the chance to work with you, it's been great. It's been so much fun. Yeah, you've been, you've been probably the hardest working animator on the team so far <laughs> by kind of a long <laughs> shot, and you seem to be really passionate about it, so that's really... That's really awesome. And yeah, I am. Your style is pretty consistent with ours as well, and it kind of looks—it looks like pretty much like the stuff that me and Zachary do. So, 
And consistent style is really important when you get other people to help with your videos. And uh, you've been doing that really well, so good job on that. You were my inspiration. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, one question, or another question I have is, what was the most fun part to work on in Skeleton Rap? Probably the first one, the, the scene one that I did. Scene one? With the, uh, boy, yeah. you know, again, friend. Yeah. yeah. Cause it had like all the big boomy movements and stuff. Oh yeah. That part looked up, or ended up looking really good, so good job on that. Thanks. What was the hardest part to do on Skeleton Rap? Um, maybe around the end. When all the like mobs are the walking? Past. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was a big shot. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't really that hard and stuff, but I mean, it was just like a lot to do. Yeah, that, that was definitely the biggest shot in the video, so I'm glad, I'm glad it turned out well because it was a, quite a big challenge when it was first laid out and the idea for it was there. We were like, oh boy, this is going to be hard, but it ended up not being too difficult because I had made a bunch of walk cycles and yeah. so you didn't have to animate as much as you previously thought, so yeah, yeah that ended up being a help. So, uh, good job on that scene. Thanks. And good job on all the rest of the animation you did for the video. It was a, it was a big help and it made it come out faster, so... Helped, helped this become the fastest Zamination production ever. Because it was only in four weeks. So, uh, thank well, you for all your help. Yep, I am known as a fast worker. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, I'm probably gonna talk to Red next. Thank you for your time and talking a little about uh, your experience on Skeleton Rap. Thank you, it was a pleasure. Alright, I'm gonna talk to Red now, so uh, goodbye. Okay, so uh, I am here with Red the Animator, who helped work on some of the animation for Skeleton Rap. So, say hello, Red. Hello. I thought you were gonna say hello, Red. <laughs> oh, dang it. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm just gonna be asking a few questions about about Skeleton Rep, and I would like to hear your thoughts on it. So, Sounds epic. Question one, um, what what was your experience like working on Skeleton Rep? I thought it was pretty fun. I really like the, uh, just like the close community feel of it, where everything's a kind of a bit more laid back, but still professional enough to make it professional I guess but it still has that like friendly vibe all around so yeah that's good I haven't heard it that way but that that is that is kind of true and I like that mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh question two um what was what was the most fun part to do during production of skeleton rep I really liked uh being able to do like these uh like the fast paced scene i did scene 19 i think right after the skeleton like busted down the door and like chased zach into the other room yeah uh yeah i really like doing that i really like like these fast almost rhythmic rhythmic i don't i don't Rhythm know how to pronounce you know that word Rhythm okay i give up too <laughs> yeah, yeah you know what word i'm talking about rhythmic like, put text I yeah it's put, rhythmic. Like, text on the screen. rhythmic yeah <laughs> anyway i like those kind of scenes where it has like that flow to it yeah, that's what most of this video was like, so that's good. Mm -hmm. it was, it's a lot of fun to do stuff like that. Yeah, so, it's satisfying to get it in the end. Uh, what was the hardest part to do uh, during Skeleton Rap? Probably no other person would say this, but I find it challenging when characters are standing in almost like the same position, and yet they're like talking or like they have dialogue. I find it challenging to get them to like bob their head or like do hand gestures in a way that feels natural and looks convincing at the oh. same time yeah, uh yeah. yeah i haven't heard that one yet but <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know why well there wasn't more... much of that in this video because mostly no one was ever standing still but there were yeah. some some parts that were like that but yeah so i enjoyed it uh, something like that is pretty easy to learn though which is good because it all comes down to just picking the right poses for what they're gonna say because they don't mm -hmm. always have to be completely like still and just head movement. But yeah. if you're going to do something just kind of subtle like that, it's mostly in the face. So you don't have to worry about uh, 
the other parts of the body moving too much. Mm -hmm. A lot shoulder movement's important if it's subtle like that. Yeah, and for like specific emphasis on words, sometimes I'll do like hand gestures. A lot of times I have to kind of like stand up and like act it out. Like, yeah. Okay, what would I <laughs> naturally do if I was saying this line? Something yeah, like that's that. that's a good way to do it. Reference is always helpful. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I know it's short, but uh, I think that's about all I wanted to ask. So, um, thank yeah. you for your time and answering my questions. Well, of course. I had a good time here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think that's the last interview I'm going to do. So, um, yeah, let's move on to the outro. All right. Cue it. So anyway, thank you for watching the behind the scenes of Skeleton Rap. Uh, it was it was really fun to work on the entire time, and the production went pretty smoothly, and it ended up being a great video, and everyone seems to love it. I'm seeing all the comments on Dan Bull's upload and our upload, and people are really liking this video. I didn't actually expect it to be so well received because, although Pigman Rap was well received, it it didn't really do too well with views, but this video is doing extremely well on both channels, so congratulations to to the production team, and especially Dan Bull for making such a great song, so shout out to him. I'll leave a link to him down in the description so you can he see his other rap videos and his upload of the song, which has an alternate ending. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you come the next Behind the Scenes. Goodbye.